Psalm 6. Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your wrath. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I am faint. Heal me, Lord, for my bones are in agony. My soul is in deep anguish. How long, Lord, how long? Turn, Lord, and deliver me. Save me because of your unfailing love. Among the dead, no one proclaims your name. Who praises you from the grave? I am worn out from my groaning. All night long I flood my bed with weeping and drench my couch with tears. My eyes grow weak with sorrow. They fail because of my foes. Away from me, all you who do evil, for the Lord has heard my weeping. The Lord has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord accepts my prayer. All my enemies will be overwhelmed with shame and anguish. They will turn back and suddenly be put to shame. What strikes me most about Psalm 6 is like Job, David, when under the cloud of defeat, he doesn't go and whinge to others, nor does he use the occasion to cultivate a callous heart towards God. Fear, pain and distress constitute his world, and it seems there's little else in his thoughts at the moment, and of course his enemies want him dead. But David turns to God. His turning constitutes a refusal to settle for things as they are, a snub to recognise the world as it would seem. His song is an act of relentless hope that considers that no situation falls outside God's capacity for transformation, nor indeed out of God's responsibility. In a book called Cry of the Soul, uh, Dan Alexander and Tremper Longman say the Psalms are, are not about an analytical treatment of emotions. They're not a how-to text to give us uh, like easy steps to overcome difficult situations. Simplistic reductions of our inner world and of life itself, they take away from this calling out to God, which is what the Psalms are about. Calling out to God in our darkness calling out for his involvement in our lives. And that's what the Psalms do. They invite us, yes, to question God, but in the context of worship. They were hymns used in public worship. And they seem the opportunity for people, for the writers to bring before God what's going on in their lives, whether that's doubt or, or even rage or terror, but doing so as part of worship. And they show us how God it is the answer God can take us through difficult situations, difficult circumstances and bring us out the other side. They're very relevant, aren't they, for this particular moment in time. And so David calls out to God and he recalls, amongst other things, God's unfailing love. In a moment, we're going to move into a time of prayer. So before we do that, why don't we bring to mind some of those stories of God's unfailing love in our own life. This is what uh, I want us to get out of this psalm today, God's unfailing love and how it can change our situation and how it's something that we can always hold on to and how as Christians it, it's our, our duty, if you like, to acknowledge what God has done for us and what God is doing for us. Perhaps there's a specific story in the Bible that's always struck at your heart. Maybe it's the story of Sarah, having spent much of her life calling out to God for child, finds out in her old age she's expecting. Maybe it's a story like that of Naomi and Ruth. Naomi lost her family, uh, her daughter, her, her son-in-laws, and she's told by this new daughter-in-law, your people will be my people and your God will be made my God. Maybe the story that uh, touches you is, is the story of Mary and Martha. They see their brother die. They desperately send out for Jesus. 
Jesus is so touched by, by the, their situation. He himself cries, the shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept, and then of course brings Lazarus back from the dead. And of course the ultimate example, Jesus giving his, Jesus giving his life, God giving his son. God so loved the world, he gave his only son. Perhaps there's a story in your life where you've seen God's unfailing love. As most of you know, I had kidney failure before Easter and, and had to be taken to hospital. Yet we saw uh, examples of, of, of love in the way many people in the church, uh, family supported us in practical ways and of course in prayer. What's your story of God's love? David wrote, the Lord has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord accepts my prayer. Prayer nurtures our relationships with God. God responds to our cries, to our whispers, to our expression of prayer. He promises to guard our lives, to change our circumstances as he deems necessary and appropriate. So let's pray to that God of unfailing love, praying in faith in the knowledge that God hears our prayers.